This is the Fixer Punk Podcast. I'm Grayson Peltier. Today, I wanted to cover the one thing that I think that progressives and leftists and democratic organizers and people who care about progressive causes should be focusing on in the new year, and that is infrastructure, but not in the way that you would think of infrastructure like the bridges, like the bipartisan infrastructure bill, but in terms of political infrastructure and media infrastructure and the business of this, really, I... I actually used to work on the conservative side quite extensively. I had been on the board of a conservative organization. I'd been on the journalism uh, team at Tea Party Patriots. I managed a small group of reporters there. And what I've noticed coming over to the left is that in terms of infrastructure and systems um, and really just having things in place ahead of time before you need them, the left really lags. And now going into a recession, I think that it's very important for progressives and leftists to know that number one, this is the time when all the gains, the fact that we have people um, striking more, the fact that we have people who are have more in savings, we've doubled like the rate of personal savings um, through the pandemic and by actually caring about the needs that people have that are real and not being blindsided into austerity. Um, this is the time when those gains are likely to be eroded. And when economic turmoil comes, when a recession comes, this is the busy season for conservatives. When I worked in the Tea Party, our business, I guess you could say, went up when the whole recession came in 2008, 2009, that was what basically built my career and the career of so many people is saying that things like inflation were a problem, that taxes were a problem, that it was more government that was the problem and helping people and giving them assistance is the problem that's causing all of your economic woes. And I'm starting to see that same pattern. I'm reading the tea leaves right now and it feels way too close to what was happening in 2008, 2009 politically. The GOP may be a mess in the House right now um, and in various legislative bodies, but know that there is an extremely well-oiled machine behind all of the apparent nonsense. And that's something that the left needs to work on. And I'm not just talking about electoral stuff. The, the stuff around election campaigns – Democrats and Republicans in terms of like election season campaigning, I would say are pretty even in terms of the quality of their resources and their infrastructure. How they use them obviously differs, but I'm talking about the long-term engagement, the people that are there when there's not an election year, the people who are working in the individual communities. Does everybody just suddenly go away once an election is done? Is the... Um, the group that you put together, is it just a group that exists only on a website um, all the other years where there isn't an election and then and then suddenly the activity comes back when there's an election? Or is it really somebody that you can go to when there is an issue in the community and you need a progressive or leftist perspective on it? Is it somebody – this is a really important test. Is the group and the infrastructure that you have in a community – is it something where a local reporter will know who to call and have somebody to call and to talk to about an issue and get a progressive perspective on that? I know that in the Tea Party, we were very big on that. We literally created a whole journalism division, which was called Government Accountability Network, where we would – and I was one of the leads on this project. And we would go and interview people who were um, – who are local Tea Party organizers, along with their local congressmen, like feature them together in like a journalistic article, um, just basically to get them used to get their reps in so that they could get used to talking to the media and then also to share our perspective and get that and, and get that into what looks like an objective uh, media uh, journalism article. And that stuff is pretty lacking on the left. Sometimes you don't even know who to call. There is a lot, a lot of activity going on um, on the left 
but it's mostly online. There are a lot of people that are semi-anonymous and the systems are not as robust. And when things go wrong, they go really, really wrong because they're not well controlled. And even when something minor comes up, when like the one key person that's involved, the, things go awry a lot more quickly on the left than they do on the right. And partially that's because a lot of times people get into leftist and progressive organizing because they're disadvantaged. Uh, they maybe don't have as much education. They don't have as much expertise with running businesses, whereas pretty much everybody who's in conservative organizing is somebody who is at a minimum uh, what Street Fight Radio would call small business tyrant. Either that or or you got somebody who is a um, who is experienced in politics or in law or something like that, and they know how to run a business. And oftentimes on the left, it's just like one person kind of doing something, which is great to have that grassroots activity, but you have to have it in a well-organized fashion. And that even goes for leftist and progressive media. There are so many like gaps that I see in how leftist and progressive media works. Number one, there are so few progressive talk radio stations as compared to conservative talk radio stations, which could be its own episode. But recently, um, Street Fight Radio went through a bit of a split. That's a show that I appear on very often. Uh, proud to have a very good relationship with Brian Quimby, who's now continuing it, and also um, with Brett Payne, although obviously they've split up, so we haven't spoken in a while. Um, but two good people that decide to go different ways, and there's been a bit of chaos in how things are being managed um, there. And um, it, he's Brian's been pretty public about it. That's why I'm talking about it here. And if you were to just run things like a proper business or a proper nonprofit, um, depending on what model you want to go for, and have everybody be on the same table and formalize and legalize all the documents so that if something happens to somebody, somebody else can take it over very easily, then that promotes resiliency in these types of operations. Of course, there are all kinds of business ecosystems as well. Um, the fact that you have all those small business owners supporting conservatives, they are going to send, you'll find somebody e more easily in a conservative crowd than in a progressive crowd. You'll find somebody who was a random one to $5,000 to throw at a local project, at a local political action committee, a local campaign. Um, and that can be a bit of a challenge because it, conservative money, it isn't like there's just this one gigantic pot of money that's sitting somewhere that's being distributed all across the country. It is hundreds or thousands of little pots of money that are going around. And it's hard to even keep track of them, but they're going to spring up no matter what. And they're going to be there to fund those efforts. On the progressive side, you have a lot of like raw passion, a lot of raw energy, but not a lot of like the actual nuts and bolts and systems and ways of even processing and handling the money. I've seen certain progressive organizers who had everything in their of their finances run through somebody's Cash App or PayPal account, which I have to say Cash App and PayPal have their uses, but they're they're payment processors. They're not they're not financial institutions. If you're going to be growing, especially if you're going to have other people involved in what you're doing, you need an actual business bank account or a organization bank account. Um, you need to have, um, if you're gonna have something where multiple people are gonna be partners or or it's gonna be a nonprofit, you have to have formal organizing documents um, that are filed with your with your state government. Um, some of this stuff you should you should consult a lawyer or, or an accountant about um, just so that things are done properly and in good order. And I would also say that there's kind of a tendency to try to keep things a little bit like underground in the left. And I, that's just not my approach. That's, I think that you can do a lot, a lot of good um, by being very above ground, ethical, responsible, and using good practices in terms of both advocacy and, and business. And that kind of feeds into 
Um, not only with this whole with this whole recession situation, the fact that I predict we're going to see a huge upswell in right wing organizing coming up. It's already coming, and the way it's coming is kind of non conventional. It's this whole self help stuff. The Andrew Tates of the world, um, the Liver Kings of the world, world, the Mike Cernoviches of the world, which I've talked about extensively on the prior episodes as well. Um, but literally just in having people in your community, you talk about, you see these school board meetings that are filled with people, with very vocal people, um, talking about absolute nonsense, claiming that critical race theory is being taught in classrooms. You have people who are trying to suppress people of other, other races or sexual orientations at public meetings. And they're a very organized front. If you Google them, you can find them. And those people are going to be very easy for the media to contact. Um, and those people are going to be very easy for people in the community to find. And when you go to these meetings, when you go to a conservative meeting, what I want people to think about, especially on the left, if you're organizing like in-person live stuff, um, do you feel good or safe being there? And how is the vibe? Does it feel like a place where you have someone that you can talk to? Honestly, as oftentimes hateful or subtly hateful as some people in the conservative movement can be. You walked into a Tea Party meeting in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. No matter who you are, you'd feel very welcome in there. Um, I brought, um, I'm half Latino. I brought some of my Latino family members. Not a problem at all with them in, in, in the meetings. And, it, and it, they were all in like locations that were, that were friendly, like a, a restaurant, a local community center, and it felt it felt kind of good being there. So you want to think about the stakeholder experience when you're designing these things, if you're doing local organizing. And then if you're doing more of like the business ecosystems and the media ecosystems kind of work, you want to have things be very established and orderly. If you're building content creation, and you're going to have a business partner or say you're making money already. And when you're first starting out, don't worry about, please don't go and start unless, of course, get legal advice, get proper legal advice, especially if you're doing a direct election campaign or supporting candidates with money or doing legislative legislative advocacy. Um, you and especially if you're receiving donations from any third parties, you have to be very careful. You have to talk to an attorney about it. But it, like in my case, it's just me here doing this podcast. I don't have to go out and necessarily do all this paperwork and all of that just yet until I'm turning a profit off of this. Obviously, I have stuff on my I – have, I have a business that, that that's connected to this, Offspeed Solutions, which is – um, the, my consulting business and this podcast helps promote that. Um, but when you're making money and when you get to the point where you're making money on these things, or if you're receiving money in the form of donations, you have to get that structuring down very, very well. And you want to be intentional about revenue opportunities as well and thinking about those and not necessarily be afraid of those things. Be careful with them. Be very, very careful. You don't want to lose your principles, but you have to know how to approach those properly. And when you're talking about um, media, and there's been there have been some people out there like after the Andrew Tate arrest, there's been a lot of talk, and you can see my TikTok. You can listen to my prior episodes on the men's fitness influencers stuff. Um, but people are basically saying, where is the progressive or leftist Andrew Tate? And the thing is, is that the ecosystems and the nuts and the bolts of it are a big part of it because we, Andrew Tate and all of these influencers, they're a business. They, they, they're in this to make money and they're surrounded by people who have expertise in entrepreneurship and business management. Of course, these are not people with good morals, Andrew Tate. Um, according to the allegations um, that are being made by law enforcement and government um, was involved in human trafficking, but these are sophisticated people. And to be able to have an operation like that, you have to have things in good order. And when you go to the progressive side, 
things kind of seem like a mess. You go to the conservative side, everything is ideal. Like, so if you wanted to become an influencer like this, where are you going to go? You're going to go to the conservative side. The conservative side has really gotten everything down in that way. So if we want to create a leftist or progressive Andrew Tate, then we need to have an entrepreneurial infrastructure and ecosystem around it. And we need to stop being, I know that the goal is ultimately to, um, to help promote workers' power and workers' financial abilities and the ability to overcome the oppression that comes with the current form of capitalism that we have. Um, but you need to work within the system now so that you have people who are in business interested in what it is that you are that what it is that you're doing and supporting it um, so that if you have somebody who has the tendency to become some sort of online influencer somebody who wants to run their own business they will feel like they still have a place in all of this and they don't feel like they're basically just around a bunch of disorganized scumbags i hate to use the harsh terms like that but we need to make sure that leftist spaces don't feel like that um, too much. There is a room for like an edginess to all of it, and I believe in self-organization, um, but I do believe that you should also have that. Have, have good skills, maintain your authenticity, and the thing is, is that the better you set yourself up, the more that you have the 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 capital the good practices of managing capital and finances and the proper legal structures working with the proper attorneys uh the the accountants the more that you're able to do and the more free that your organization is going to be to actually do more things that are positive for your community because you're not going to have to be bogged down with who knows what's going to happen with with money or with money being stolen by somebody or some kind of legal action, the IRS, you can then just focus on doing the right things and, and serving. So that's kind of the lesson for now is a good New Year's resolution would just be to work on that infrastructure first off on the personal level. Personal level, having a place where people can go to and having people that they can talk to that people feel comfortable talking to and being around to discuss progressive political and social ideas. And then secondly, having the organizational structure, business structure, as you start to get more and more people involved, more and more money, get the appropriate legal structures of things. And if you're, especially if you're taking account and you're holding money for other people or you're taking donations or anything like that, get appropriate accounting, separate into a business bank account. There are laws that if you're running a campaign, you have to have a separate campaign bank account. And those are a special kind of bank account. Um, I personally have not had to set up one of those, but um, there are references on how to do that if you're going into campaigning. But honestly, that's something where you need a more in-depth personalized um, approach to to handle that um, or if you're starting a pack but in general you want to keep things very organized and orderly um, and compliant um, be willing to and able to connect with professionals and people who support your cause who are who have that professional expertise who have that business acumen and that fully support and believe in, your cause because the most important thing is that the people you work with are people that believe in what you're doing and that follow your culture and your ideas because if you're going to go to somebody who's just going to impose their their very very rigid ideas of how things are going to be are supposed to be done then it's just going to lead to disaster. I talked about that in my um warning signs and social movement leadership episode talking about what was happening in AEW wrestling. Um but you that is that is that is critical that is imperative that whomever you're working with gets what you're trying to do gets the kind of structure you're trying to have the kind of empowerment that you want to have the kind of free open community that you're trying to run um and isn't just trying to force you into one very specific model of operating but rather is using their expertise in law finance business 
um, whatever, to enable you to be able to do what it is that you want to do in a more effective and appropriate manner. And then be able to handle situations where um, you're coming into money and when you're um, dealing with people who may be um, of a more professional type class by having those connections, having those people who are in your corner, who are on your side, that can help you get to that. And then lastly, of course, the big imperative of all of this, the reason why this is also important is because conservatives have set up extensive infrastructure. And as the recession comes, it's going to get even more big. This is the busy season. This is like the this is like the Super Bowl of conservative organizing whenever the economy crashes, and especially when there is a Democrat in the White House. So you want to be ready for that, and you want to be able to capitalize on that, uh, be able to communicate well with members of the community, members of the media, um, have a house and a system that is in good order and in line with your principles and values and what you want to be, not just something that's slapped in there. And... And really just be ready to deal with what comes um, when this when this recession really hits. Um, I'll probably get into even more details about this. I'll get more details into media ecosystem specifically and talk radio and that whole business. And maybe a little bit more on constructing a leftist Andrew Tate um, type figure on a future episode not sure if that's going to be next week's episode next week i will be going to aew in los angeles on january 11th um so that might shift the podcast schedule i don't it's not really a conducive place to be recording a podcast unfortunately i wish i could do a remote out there um a lot of good social issues um lessons lessons in organizing alternative culture and politics through pro wrestling, as we always mention on here, um, but it'll probably just be more of a standard episode, and it may even be a shorter episode. Where you do want to check out, though, is all the social media at FixerPunk, F-I-X-E-R-P-U-N-K, on TikTok, Instagram, um, Twitter is at Grayson Nation, G-R-E-Y-S-O-N-N-A-T-I-O-N, um, and the website is FixerPunk.com. Feel free to reach out to me if you're if you have any concerns, questions. If you like the show, um, you want to bring up a future topic, you can get a hold of me. Um, you can use the email Grayson G R E Y S O N at offspeedsolutions.com. Um, if you're interested in consulting around communications or business um, consulting for progressive organizing or marketing for your socially responsible business uh, models and approaches to communicate your unique values to your consumer base or to your stakeholder base, then of course reach out to me and I will try to be as best of help as possible um, using my experience working um, and being on both sides of the aisle. So thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you spending your time with the show and I hope to see you back here next time.